This Metatainment production is brought to you today by the Samurai Aquatics and Decor MetaVenture. Scan that QR code or click that link in the description and dive yourself headfirst into the Samurai Aquatics Discord server to pleasure your peepers on our current and future range of outdoor decor. Established in April 2021, Upland Development United is the oldest and most exclusive and transparent node development collaborative in the Upland Metaverse. Contact more choose Ben68 for more information. Warning! This podcast is produced by Metaverse Ventures Entertainment. It contains unsolicited and heavily biased opinions which are solely the views of the individuals involved. It does not include investment advice of any kind and you are responsible for undertaking your own financial, including tax liability research relevant to your own individual circumstances. Thank you for listening to or watching the UD podcast. This is year three, number 107, presented by Metaverse Ventures Entertainment, More Cheese, and me, Ben68, featuring co host Dak, Joe Lives, the agency, TB125, Uplando, members from the Upland Development United team, and of course, general Upland community members. Today's show is recording live on either Tuesday, the 27th, or Wednesday, the 28th of June, depending on where you're at. How are you doing this morning, Cheese? I can't complain. Can't complain. <laughs> Well, you can. Well, you want more? Um, you do. Uh, no, yeah, I'm good. I'm good, Ben. How are you doing? How's everything? I'm dead ass tired. But all right, this week, as always, we'll catch up on some crypto and upland market news. We'll run through some of our co host segments. We've got a few people away today, uh, but we've got a few extras in. So we'll see how we go. We'll also dive into the cricket festival that went on with the recent car sales and that's currently going on with the spark sales. Oh, and we'll run a very interesting quips this week and, of course, give away a prize of two to one of our live participants on this, the UDU podcast. So let's get into the Breaking Badly news and take a look at what's happening in some of the crypto and upland markets. And, oh, mama. Oh, mama. Oh, mama. We got green (laughs) cheese. We got green. I'm very happy to see this so I didn't have to start dollar cost averaging again. I wasn't really quite ready for it. Crypto market cap up 8.3%. Looking quite healthy indeed. Yeah, that's nice. Bitcoin dominance back to 50%. We haven't seen that for ooh, quite a while. I think from memory, it might be 2021 or something like that since we've seen Bitcoin dominance at 50. Yeah. Very, very interesting indeed. And we're back over 30,000, so 30,736 USD to buy yourself if you want to be a one coiner. That's 10.8% boost. Ethereum's up. The only one spoiling the party's Ripple. <laughs> but it's only. Well, remember when I said to you um, Bitcoin was going to be over 30 in the summer? Yep. All right. So, what do I owe you? Like 50 UPEX or something? That was uh, I I just want I just enjoy you saying yeah that I'm right so you could keep the fifty up <laughs> stick it up my apex yes <laughs> yes everyone's up wax up thirty no not thirty I can't say properly twelve point six percent what else is looking healthy oh what did I see avax was it avax up thirteen point seven percent yep everything's green 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 except for ripple so mm-hmm. very cool. <laughs> Very cool indeed. Which it's interesting. Normally around holiday periods, you see it drop a little bit as people pull out some money to spend up big. I guess we'll have to see what it looks like next week with, um, what do you got? What's the bloody, I just said it before, 4th of July, isn't it? Next week. So see if that makes a difference. Yeah. Um, Upland, on the other hand, is spoiling the party. The transaction volume down 1.7% and the 90-day average trading volume down a touch. Those are very long time frames, so they don't move much. Unique active wallets up 2.2%, which is nice. And we had a whole bunch of unminted properties added. So currently we're at 340,195 unminted properties. So lots out there. Market news. Um, 
the UPX buy for UPX and sell for USD is raging in San Francisco. Uh, I see there's a few familiar faces in this Zoom now that are part of that. It's all a bit of fun. So that dropped down to as low as $8.25 this morning when I sold a whole bunch. So, yes, that's a 23.6% drop. So <clears throat> Look at London, though. The UPX floor, that looks really cool. That there's caveats on. on that. Oh. Remember last week I said I was in a hurry, and some of them I just got from the the um, overall thing on UPX. World. Yeah, yeah, that was that was one of the lock properties. So there, I think there's oh. one there at twenty five thousand, and it's somebody in jail or something. So that's the thirty four thousand nine hundred is the proper price. So this week they're all the proper prices. All right. Yes. I'm predicting San Francisco is going to go down to as low as oh, 6.99 is my prediction. So, yeah. 6.99. You're such a jerk. 6.80 maybe. Ooh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Maybe I'll buy some of those. Well, it gets to that point where you start looking at it and you're like, geez, that is a decent price, especially if the UPX stays where it is. The UPX price doesn't change much at all um there's a few people myself and probably about half a dozen dozen others that if there's anything there at certain time frames like obviously i sit down to do a mine at 7 p.m and it's the same names that gobble them all up so yeah and i, I would imagine it's the same for the U u.s side um people buy I mean, it's a selling. good deal it's a good deal for both you and the buyer absolutely that's what the game is it's what it started yeah. off as property trading game Manhattan's also getting getting toasted there, down six point four percent on the UPX and down nine, almost nine and a half on the USD. Well, Everything I'd like to else. buy some more on Manhattan. So if it continues on that route, I might save up for it. Yeah, well, thirty. What have we got? Thirty-two dollars. I mean, you got to really be careful though. Like if you're buying to hold those, not just buying to flip. Make sure you have a look through the market list because there's you can in many of these um, cities where the UPX USD flipping is going on. Um, I think it might have been somebody I was talking to on Twitter the last couple of days was we were discussing this, and it doesn't really matter if there's a building on it or not. I mean, I've flipped in San Francisco, I flipped in Manhattan, where I bought up the cheapest on the UPX flop, and it just happened to have a building on it. Made no difference to me. I was just buying to flip it. So, yeah. So keep your eye out for that. And of course, you got to look at the, if you're buying to hold, look at the up square as well. And maybe yeah. even look and maybe even look at the, um, the neighborhood that it's in. Cause we've got, there's a big community of uh, Manhattan folks that are, you know, they push Chelsea. Now they're pushing Hell's Kitchen. So, oh, I have Hell's Kitchen. That's where my big one is. That's where my art design school is. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. If you're buying to hold, there's deals out there. And there's some, if you take the time to look through it, there's some really good deals out there. Yeah. Um, what else happened? Bronx is getting smashed on the USD down to $4. I think. Yeah, Bronx it, sale. Yeah. I think LA is headed for $3. Bronx is headed for $3. I mean, they're all going to get to the floor eventually. <clears throat> Dallas well, is up I mean 14%. Yep. I guess it just depends on like, you know, who comes in and takes advantage of this. If you want to, yep. you know, create a node, this is, this is a great, a great time to find, you know, your favorite neighborhoods in certain cities and just kind of yep. give, it, give it value. Yeah. And if you're somebody who's come into the game, you know, not that long ago, then this is a really good opportunity to get into some of these older cities that have sold out and whatnot. So. yeah but it's interesting to see um i know this was being debated in general through the week as well there's a few people who've been buying up the usd floor so their net worth isn't a reflection of their dividends so they're getting more income than yeah. what, their, what their um status so they have to they have to log in three times a day to collect the divs otherwise they miss out it's a good problem to have. Yes. And I do think Upland needs to evolve to that eventually because like the new players, like, you, you know, you don't just play, you play smart. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is bothering me. And, and they're, they're playing smart. You know, they have mentors guiding them through it. There's the new, you know, uh, Upland uh, 
quests they have in the side, walking them through stuff. So I wonder if Upland will ever try to put the kibosh on this. I know that San Francisco, it's still being sold for above mint on the USD, but some of the many of these other cities, you're talking below mint USD sales. It's interesting. I don't know. Anybody else want to chime in with their very biased opinions? What's happening in the markets? Are you buying USD? Are you selling UPX? What are you doing? No? I'm doing a bit of both. Buying USD that are way under mint, like in the sort of 40 to 45%. And then also buying like UPX ones that are in like the 85 to 95% around the place and just trying to just trying to stock up and then decide whether I'm going to hold them or sell them. Yeah. 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 I um... mean, oh, go ahead. No, you finish. I was going to say it's better it's better to get it out of the, the hands of people who want to get out and into the hands of people who want to do something with it. Yeah. So yeah. I don't see this as a as a big deal at all. I think it I see it as a great opportunity. Yes. Now, I did read somebody again. <laughs> sorry, I, I read these things while I'm pooping or whatever, and I always forget names. <laughs> so somebody was saying if you're gobbling up the floor at three dollars, that's the lowest it can ever go. So the only only directions you sell it and you you lose your five percent, but you would have collected your earnings and visitor fees in that time. So, I mean, it's pretty smart unless Upland was to reduce the the minimum sale price. No. So, I think three is perfect. Yes, and look yeah. at LA. LA three dollars sixty eight. It's headed for th it's headed for three dollars as well. So, it'll it'll get gobbled up by those who want to do good. Yes. So I don't know. There is certainly a lot of meat left on plenty of those bones, shall we say? Yeah. All right. Where are we at? I think we're over to you. The over to you, Chase. Over What's to going me? on? What's going so on? So much, so much exciting stuff. Uplando, take it away. Oh my gosh! Of course, yes. Hello, hello, <laughs> uh, everybody. You, you, how are you doing? Uh, Uplando here. What uh, a plan stuff. There's a couple things uh, that have been very interesting. Of course, the car, the auto, the MB sales, and, and I can kind of leave that if uh, Dak jumps in. My two cents worth on that was, again, you know, it's funny because <clears throat> I watch General and people are like, what's going on? These, you know, I can't buy any cars like early on. I can't get an MV motor. I'm so peeved. I'm so mad. I can't get one. And then there's too many MV motors over there. I've already got, you know, you can't, it's almost like you can't balance it out enough. But remember, there are, you know, there are different time zones. So people are waking up and they're excited that they can see more vehicles that are there. And I, I've even been buying vehicles for specific gameplay purposes that I have down the road. So at, at, at this point, I am still buying MV Motors. I, I did buy one uh, this sale and uh, will continue to do so. And hopefully we see more and more obvious, <clears throat> you know, they, they they bring more and more in in terms of the speedways there is one in detroit i thought there was one in la but there's only one currently that's been approved in, in uh, detroit so we'll see how that unfolds and then from that as i understand it, you'll be able to do upix for races and things of that nature as a meta venture so i i do want to see that come in and i want to i want to have that as much as anybody else does. So um, other things, we did get a Spark Week that's kicked off. I've been looking at that. Spark seems to be still going pretty well. And uh, there is still building going on. And for those of you who have nodes and you are looking to build, or if you have a road or a street or any of the properties that you have and you're putting structures on those, those are going to have utility in the layer two projects. There's a couple right now. Uh, there's Kingdoms and there's Uplandia. And of course, I'm working with Uplandia to do that. So bringing all that stuff in and including <laughs> the in-game wallet assets that you have that's for us anyway that's going to be a big part of ushering it in and giving utility to that so i do think that upland will get around to a lot of these things that they have on the you know on the roadmap or the roadmap was on and was off <clears throat> so we'll see we'll see how that goes and works out um anything oh the 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 cat the cafes the cafes had been go over to reddit get yourself over there tell us oh, your feedback yeah. about the cafes Feedback, 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 improvement that's in what features. Was what was that? Well, that's odd. I was forgetting. I was saying to Chase, I was forgetting something this morning before we got kicked off, and that's what it was. Yeah, keep talking. All Sorry. the cafes? Yeah. I, yep. I'm going to check something. 
Yeah, so uh, interestingly enough, Noise to Meet you, who is lead developer in Uplandia, won a cafe at Genesis. And so we are working together to try and put something together to see how that works and how that goes down and all that good stuff. It's there's a, The cafes are integrated with Nowhere, which is uh, otherwise your platform that you're on. I was over in Real Note LA with more cheese and and uh, uh, Shacklin and Goldsmith and so many others that I'm forgetting banana. And we were playing games and doing our thing. And there is a there's a capacity there, right? So you can only have so many before things start to start to matrix out and and glitch and things fall on top of each other. But it was a lot of fun. So I can see a lot of a room for improvement, but definitely get in, you know, you know, get over there if you got anything to say, say. Um, let's see. The only other thing that most people I think are waiting for, even though we've had two city openings, Tokyo is very, very eagerly awaited. And I think that that is going to be a lot of fun. I think Tokyo will be an incredible city and I can't wait for that. Uh, but that's pretty much the, 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 the kit and caboodle. We have a holiday coming up. Uh, Fourth of July is a holiday here in the States and uh, we may see some things. I don't know from last year, cheese, if we had some things in Upland for that. Did we have some Fourth of July or no? Um, I think it was late. I think p we didn't have it last year and then people really wanted it. So they came out with that. I, I believe, don't quote me, it was a heart with wings. Mm, okay. And they may have something to do, but if you, uh, you're going into the holiday, uh, for the States anyway, that's maybe something to, to kick around and do some things and hang out with some people and all that good stuff. Yeah. Should be yeah. bandages block explorer for when you blow your fingers off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, lady fingers no more. That usually is <laughs> like a, a bottle rocket in the <laughs> eye, in the eye. Of, of spider bite Billy. <laughs> yes. I would buy that. Yes. I would buy that. Now yeah, we're that's talking. good. That's good stuff. Um, um two uh, things. What's that? Sorry, I was just going to interject there. I'll, I'll skip ahead because this is relates to you. I'll skip ahead yeah. and do some UDU news. Um, apologies, I didn't end up opening the merge over to the NBA. Still considering how to best set up the server framework framework there for the long haul. I'll endeavor to get that sorted out this week. But what I wanted to interject is Uplando does have a Spark staking event going on in the School District United node. Check that out if you haven't built all of your SDU properties. Did you want to speak to that too, Uplando? Yeah, you know what? So the node of school, look, there's going to be a really big announcement for what school is going to become. And I'd always said it's going to be something educational civic. So it's going to fall along those lines. I've got about a hundred and let's just say hundred plus properties over there. I started building on 20 the other day uh, with house spark. So all of that is currently over there. Uh, I'm not going to stop. So as soon as I get those 20 done, <clears throat> I'm going to do another 20 and another 20 and another 20. And if you have properties over there, I will, I will dump some spark on there and get, get it going. But uh, for sure, Ben, that's the, that's the play. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you there, Mike. No, not at all. Anything else that you had that you were, you had no nope. questions about? You can finish off. Gotcha. So um, two things that are coming up that will be of fun and great interest. So we do have, uh, after we get past the holiday, we will be officially opening Bronxdale. The contest just ended for Uplandia. And uh, I can't spell. I, 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 and my, I, you know, I, I said the wrong city. It wasn't in Queens. It was Bronxdale, uh, for uh, cheese. That was one of the properties. And then fifty thousand epics and a quest. So Goldsmith won the fifty k. Believe it or not, he was rigged. Uh, over rigged. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know if it was if it was rigged, he wouldn't have won. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so what's Ouch. fun is i've got the videos so we did duck races and i got the videos and ben in one of the duck races you're 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 very close at the front of the pack and then your duck ran out of steam so sounds um, about right but <laughs> i do have the official videos so if people want to go watch it at any rate that's our first contest we have another property that's going up uh for dtex a giveaway and then additionally there is a bonus we always do a little bonus if you like retweet something or you go over into the you're in the upland uplandia discord that kind of thing so check it out. And then lastly, I will say that uh, for a lot of people, the movie, The Color Purple is very, it's like one of their favorite movies. They love it with Whoopi Goldberg. And we have purple in, the, we have some purple dots on the map of Upland. 
and I think you might see a few more purple mm. show up on the map very soon. So keep your eye out. A little little hint, a little drop of uh, something something, and we'll see how that unfolds. Cheese, back to you. Thank Intriguing. you. Thanking you. Uh, Dak didn't jump in, right? Not yet, no. All right, so we, let's put him towards the end just in case, and then if not, we'll just say his bit. Uh, the Hot Boys. Oh, no, TB, TB, sorry. Where's oh, your ever? Where's your ever? <laughs> Second one. <laughs> no, this is perfect timing because I'm just in the middle of a uh, Upland go-kart racing contest and I made it Ooh. into the final, which I'm going to be competing in in a matter of moments. So uh, I'll get my bit done here and then see if I can't win some, uh, some prizes at the same time. Nice. Um, yeah. So let's talk legits. Uh, it's been quite an interesting week, actually, in the legits world. There, there's a few things going on which I think have uh, sparked some interest. So no, numbers are definitely up in the sales, um, especially for FIFA and NFL legits. Now, I'm looking at it with two theories on the FIFA. Uh, one is uh, Shaq's game. The ladies' meta soccer, which I think a lot of people are quite excited to have a go at. People are definitely picking up some cheap FIFA stuff to uh, to play games in that. Um, also, though, uh, and I think this might speak to the football legits as well, I think people are running out of things to do trades with. Um, mm. as, as we get more and more people wanting to swap things, you need burner items. Yes. And right now, the, uh, the FIFA legits and the football legits are the only things that are really disposably cheap. Um, so I think people are starting to pick them up just to use as burners for trades um, because what's starting to happen, and I'm hoping this is a good thing for Meta Ventures too, is that as there are less things to use as burners, people will be forced into the Meta Ventures a little bit more. And I'm hoping that will actually help that entire ecosystem to look a little, a little bit better. So I'm feeling quietly positive about that this week, um, which is a nice thing for once. Well, um, what are they the, going for, like three to 500, something like that? Yeah, I mean, I had a few for 99 and they got cleared out this oh, wow. week. I've had well over 100 wow. sales in my store this week. Um, <clears throat> people have been shopping hard. Um, oh, so wow. there, there are a bunch of cheap ones still out there if you're willing to do a lot of travel. But really, the baseline now is sort of 399 to 499 for a, for a, a basic FIFA legit. Um, yeah, there's a few cheap ones out there which people are using to tempt people into their stores, but for the most part, you're sort of looking, yeah, 400 to 500 epics. Um, yeah, which is still not bad when you think about what the packs cost originally. It's probably, you know, around the mint value, roughly speaking. Um, so there's definitely some improvement there. NFL PA stuff, I'm not sure whether there's just some preseason trading going on or anything more exciting than that, uh, or whether it's just more of this uh, sort of disposability factor, but it's it's definitely interesting. Hmm. Uh, on the other legit fronts, we're not seeing much movement in um, what I am keep calling the wrong thing, but I've now remembered it's map assets. Uh, we're not seeing much movement in map assets at the moment. Um, I don't know in particular why that is, because there's some pretty cool stuff out there, but uh, I guess there just hasn't been much much excitement around it and, and you know, not a huge amount of use for it other than looking pretty right now. Um, but I've picked up a few things along the way. Uh, yeah. What has been interesting, and I can't get metrics on it from the systems that I use, but is the, um, is the, the property decorations, because people are using the crates for things other than decorating their properties um, yes. to People, people are using the crates as part of the treasure hunting game. I've started using them to write out hilariously funny things on some of my properties just to keep people entertained as they travel around Vegas. So keep a lookout for those. Um, and, uh, you know, so they're, they're sort of serving a secondary purpose. So I'm not seeing any of those going for less than 10,000 epics now, um, which, you know, is not bad as a baseline. And there's some going for a lot more. And then um, I think, you know, the, some of the sort of Jackie Tsai things, that kind of stuff, people are picking up and paying extra for in the hope that the transfers over to uh, the Ethereum blockchain come and they can dump those onto there as well. So 
lot lots going on in the, the legit world this week really it's been kind of interesting um if you want to talk about cars now i'll happily do that or if you want to wait and see if that comes on i can jump back in later on and we can talk about them then yeah all right sure. yeah follow up on that because we do want have a lot to say on that thanks tv no problem yeah it's good that the the legits are going back up in value like yeah with the- man isn't it sad that the the utility is that everyone's excited about for legit is to use as burners though? So looking forward to some of these other projects to come to fruition. Yeah, definitely. True that. Uh, what are we on? The hot boys or? Oh, wasn't TB? Are you gonna did you oh. dive into the cars? Uh, I'll come back to the cars in a minute because I'm about to start my race. So okay. if Jack doesn't, <laughs> no we'll uh, we'll get onto the yeah the cars ranting in a little bit because I know Leave there's him? other people. Who- to say All as well right. leave him and alone Ben. i'll just <laughs> we did talk about um cafes and somebody in chat asked about it i just tried to um go to the san francisco cafe and i got a white screen crash on ios then i got a black screen and then i had an app crash so i don't know it doesn't seem to be working for me on mobile it, it was trying but then it just couldn't connect through so not sure all right now where are we at cheese I'm the hot boys. Oh, they in today. I didn't see them. I see, there's hot, agency here. Hot boy. Hot boy. Hot yeah. boy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we can still drop it like it's hot for you. Thank you. So welcome to episode number 34 of Drop It Like It's Hot. Drop It Like It's Hot. <laughs> Thank you so much. You have to bear with me. I have people just starting. I had that fire at my house a year ago. Well, they just started today. So oh, wow. every time <laughs> there's a bang outside, the dog raises cane. So anyway, Aww. down to business. Um, we'll start off the week, and this was yesterday, actually. And this was a release of a play-to-earn NFT project called Orchid Hunter. Thought since it was a new and it's pretty much an alpha state, it might help to like spring it to life a bit to bring it up. Um, I'm still learning about it. And I just it's a product on my radar. And... Excuse, bear with me here. Um, I heard a knock at the door. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fear the um, reaper. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a little bit more about it is this is what they wrote about themselves. It's a product with exquisite art. I don't know that that artwork on that first thing that you're showing right there was the best art I've ever seen in the world. But I mean, if the game's okay. It might not matter as much, but if you scroll down a little bit, I thought I saw some that was a little better. Um, and yeah, like that one, for instance. So that gave me a little hope. <laughs> Ooh, <I don't> <laughs> Anywho, so uh, that's going to, and then they have a giveaway Saturday, June 30th, um, and that's 23 UTC or 3 p.m. PST. So maybe try to do that. I'd love if someone won something from something we mentioned, you know, on here. Yeah, so, um, and I guess they said they had a strong community, so I'd be willing to check that out and see how true that is. Anyway, next we have, and this one's at today at 1600 UTC or 8 a.m., so it's out now. It's uh, Universe, Universtrix, and they are unleashing their Primal Kingdom pack, and this is a collection NFT trading card game, and it's whitelisted on Atomic Hub. So I'm trying to get, <clears throat> trying to they're just trying to get their name out there. Um, I do like their artwork. It, it, was, it seemed to be like a Pokemon type game. Um, I'm gonna have to go. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't mean to do that to you, but uh, I will be back. <laughs> nice. All right. Um, Brick Society is he, having. <laughs> he literally dropped it like it was hot. Yeah, he did. <laughs> well, this is the rest of his stuff. I could just say it real quick. Um, yep. So Brick Society, it looks like, you know, if they get a hundred reactions, they'll go to, and oh, I have to do that on my other thing. Giveaways, they're having some giveaways. One for one V Punk, like tweet, check out Brick Society. There's Teddy Pig and Colosimo there. Uh, Teddy Pig's a UDUer. He's a really cool guy. You know, good stuff over there. Um, And also cat stickers from... What is that? Jazz cat stickers. She's really cool. Um, who doesn't like cat stickers? It's a family favorite. That one. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying really hard. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> uh yeah cat stickers giveaway look look at that cat miss cats eight hours ago so go check that out and that's it drop a like it's hot oh my gosh what a fizzler <laughs> Well, speaking of giveaways, I know if DTEC's got a big giveaway in there, he is um, banging away. Speaking of banging away, he's banging away in his basement, which sounds horrendous, but no, he's doing some renovations <laughs> or something. I don't know if you're there, DTEC. Are you there to give us the heads up on what you got going on? He said he was going to maybe run on over if I shouted him out. Let's see how he goes. I just want to yes, say, oh, go he's ahead. Here. Look at him. Look. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm having a contest on my server. Two contests. One you just have to sign up to. It's going to be like a big wheel with all the names like Ben does. <laughs> I'll learn how to do that. And another one, you just buy uh, anything in the Samurai Aquatic store. And that's an entry. And so far, <laughs> I think everybody who bought something is getting a prize. So <laughs> it's a big, nice. big chance of getting good stuff. We're giving away... Um, the samurai surfer uh, statues, which are pretty expensive. We got two cars. We got some prizes from Aplendia and UPX Spark Exchange, and uh, some of my NFTs that my daughter drew. Perfect. All right. So make sure you get yourself over to DTEC server <laughs> and check that out. And since we're giving away some stuff, let's give away some more stuff. Let's see if it's going to reload. No, it didn't. Amazing. All right. Now. <laughs> If you've been following on for the last couple of weeks, you know that Mid-10 Terrace did a bit of a boost. We did a thing where we were trying to boost our residents to see see what we could do with our, our um, overhood neighborhood score. And I believe we pushed up into third place, which is kind of cool. We'll get um, Rock on next week to go through it all if he's available. But these are all of the current mid Terrace residents. And just a bit of a surprise giveaway. I'm going to spin this wheel and whoever it comes up with is going to win five Christmas spirals. And a Halloween sign. So let's see. Let's see who's going to win. Da, 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 da. Oh, Green Turtles just missed out. And it is the one and only Hawaiian Fish. Yay. Congrats, Fish. Now, we'll, uh, we'll put it out there too. Um, this competition, well, this kind of event really, up until this point has just been about residency. But for this last, what do we got? We got... Till the fifth, so we've got a few days left. Um, I'll run another thing now. It's just like a bit of a bonus. If you can stack up your home residence in Midtown Terrace with as much outdoor decor as you can fit on there, and send me a screenshot of that, I'll put all of those names on a wheel, and we'll give away a bunch of give away a whole bunch of shit as well as part of that. So there's an extra little thing. So if you did set your residency to Midtown Terrace, stack it up, stack it up, and if it's already stacked up, all you got to do is yes, yeah, DM me a screenshot. All right. I just we... wanna I wanna make a quick mention on how uh upland dapper Musita looks right now. He's got the glasses on, oh, he's got the, the scarf on. He look at the little llama peeking over his shoulder. Mr. Musita, are you able to give us a, <laughs> an update on what you got going on with anything, including Stropwood? Oh yes. Stropwood a... is growing. Chase, you weren't joking, <laughs> Chase. Have a go. <laughs> You're ready to go. Yeah, back to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's not letting it go. He's going to hold that's on why, for as long as possible. I, yeah. That's why I really like gallery view because you get to see all the amazing people that join <laughs> in every week. I love it. Nice. Well, she just got the Genesis Week underwear on too, but he can't show that because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have everything. <laughs> I think we've got a disclaimer in the front that could cover that <laughs> if he wants to get radical. <laughs> but he's hardcore. He's straight edge. You see it, man. Don't mess. Yeah, Don't radical. mess. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, Blando. Man. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot, of, a, a lot of stuff going on on the lens battle stuff. We have to, to try to figure out how to solve a problem that we found, but it's almost there. I say almost there like two weeks ago, but yeah, we are almost there again. And probably next week we have, um, we, we need people to test, like to do, to check if the server is going, it's going well, but I think everything is, is good to go. And 
uh, strip wood, we we have some beauties going on. Always, <laughs> every day, <I> have some <laughs> beauties going on there. Slowly. Uh, by the way, if you have any suggestions for that node, I'm open to to hear. Okay. We have a lot of great players there, right? Maybe for Oplandia. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. yeah I, i'm here playing a lot of i don't know the name to to feed my calls every 10 minutes i have to, <laughs> to <laughs> send that man an application <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah they die every time i forgot to feed them <laughs> oh. you're a monster <laughs> you're a killer cow killer Ooh. cow killer <laughs> i have alexa all the time uh, doing some some noise here to remember me to feed the the calls. Is that easy? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a full time <laughs> job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I have. I don't know how to say it in English, but I can pay attention of in one thing. I I, I start to, to lose yeah. it. Yeah, you can't yeah. multitask. Yeah, so they have to remember me what I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it, and I'm planning to to the next Genesis week to bring all my family. To, to Vegas to meet all of you. That is yeah. so cool. Not all yeah. my family, but my wife. <laughs> yeah. And my, my son. Oh, nice. yeah. How old is your son? Uh, he's going to be born next month. So. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Little yeah. baby. I mean, yeah. baby yes. <laughs> That's going to be his shirt. <laughs> One day. <laughs> Don't get him thrown in Alcatraz before his first birthday. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. But that's it. That is from my side, I think. That All is right. cool. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing. Yeah. All right. We don't have the DAC man in. He did send me a few notes. So I'll just run through those quickly just to get you up to speed with what's going on. He said, uh, point number one Mahoney MV Motors is having their go kart racing event on the day of the recording. I believe that might be the one that TB's involved in. How'd you go, TB? Is it still running? Just finished. I came in fifth overall, so not oh, bad. Nice. Well done. Do you know who won? Yeah, it was uh, Akapropi, followed by Matsudo and JL Wheels in third. Oh, All nice. right. Okay. It was actually pretty good fun. Like, yeah. yeah. A few glitches, but uh, uh, definitely better than the uh, traditional style of racing. All right. Brilliant. All right. Point number two was um, MV motor cell happened and Dak said, but TB5 is probably a better person to speak to that. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll speak to that in a minute after we get through a few more things. And number three, URL hosted a URL NFT registration raffle. And the winner is da, 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 to be announced tonight by Mass Chef. So <laughs> this is the first step in being able to use the URL NFT designed by Metaverse Buck as something more than just a collectible. This is part of expanding the economic model of racing in Upland beyond just racing. And then... I think that last bit might be a bit sneaky peaky, so I'll hold off on that. All right, Chase, what else you got? Somebody else is in today. What yeah, got- we have one of the ninjas, Mike. Uh, I, I, He has a show out. I want to know about all of that and uh, take it away. Hey, guys. Thank you very much for the invite today. It's good to see everybody. So I'm one half of the Hyde Park experience with KO Ninja, if you guys know him. I know I see a lot of familiar faces here from Genesis, so good to see everybody again. I'm already ready for next year. So um, our show, we actually do a live stream every week now is on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern and can keep people up to date on what we have going with our experience. And um, as far as things going on in the community, we just like to kick it and have fun. And we were working really hard on our Hyde Park experience game. And it's going to basically bridge web three and authentic martial arts so we've got a really cool game coming for you guys and it's got a lot of uh, martial arts stuff in there a lot of similarities to like games like D and games i grew up with as a kid so we're looking forward to bringing that out to you guys and then we also have our whole coffee project going on and the coffee is actually going to have an in-game play as well so we'll have a ninjava cafe 
where the avatars can actually go to the cafe. They can get a little energy boost um, for gameplay. Um, we'll also have some uh, protein packs too to build their power. So lots of cool stuff coming in game and a lot of it apply right back to in real life. Um, we do have a regular cafe where we do sell the Ninjava, uh, the roast. Um, so we're excited about that. We're, we've got kind of a different spin on NFTs and we're trying to make them where they're totally functional NFTs and they have a real shared equity. So we're we're looking forward to putting that out and uh, making it happen. That sounds nice. cool. I love that name in Java. And yeah. that's cool how that's you're awesome. using that as a power up within the game. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's yeah, we're trying to tie everything back to real life. And I think that's probably one of the hardest things when you get involved in the metaverse. And I got started in cryptos and stuff and found Decentraland and Sandbox. And I think like a lot of others, I just kind of drifted to Upland. It made more sense. And I know it's got its quirks and, and things that drive everybody crazy. Um, but I think for the most part, they're doing a lot of really good things. And having built two of my own businesses in real life, there's a lot of uh, trial and error throwing stuff up on the wall and seeing what sticks. And I think overall, they're not doing a bad job. They could always do better like any of us, but um, I've been happy with the the progress. And, um, you know, I think it's just only going to get better. It seems like a lot of the team that I met in person in Vegas is here and they're really looking to do some good things. And I feel like they're getting a lot of uh, input from the players. And I think the players are the people, we're the ones that are going to build this yeah. and put it out there. So I think we're one of the most important things at this point. So I agree with good. that. I, I agree. Like, like, uh, I think anybody here would love to do collaborations or promotions or whatnot. And it's just a great network of people, you know? Yeah, I agree. And I <clears> think, <throat> you know, a lot of us that are in this cast right now, we are kind of at the beginning of it. So it's even more important for us to collaborate, to build for the future. I don't look as anybody as like competition, um, we're pretty open to talking to everybody. We do a lot of work with Too Stupid to Win in TML with the projects they've got going on. And the Hyde Park experience is actually being built in layer two within Upix World. So really, we're really excited to be able to collaborate with everybody. It's only going to do big things for later on. Sounds good. Thanks for jumping on, mate. Thank you for having me, guys. No worries, anytime. And yeah, what, speaking of like that kind of bridge and the crossover, Cheese and I dove in deep with the DX NFT project. Did you want to speak about that at all, Cheese? That was a fun show, that one, last week. Hold on. DX NFT. Yes, yes. Okay. I was going to um, say you blank, and that was probably <laughs> the best show we've ever done. Yes, but like, you know, I'm talking to two people. All right. So, yeah, that was really freaking cool. We had the X on with Satoshi, um, uh, Lieutenant Dan S.A., uh, Sean. It was really freaking cool. Everything that they have out that they have planned for down the road. It's just really cool. I know, you know, um, first person shooters on everyone's thing, but it's my thing. So I'm extremely excited about this. Yeah. Um, and, and it just it, like the, the play earn and then learn like, cause they have all the historian, historic, yep. uh, war figures and, you know, what they accomplished, what they were, were strong and weak at. It was just really cool. Yeah, okay. I, I had no real interest in the whole buy guns thing or first person shooter play. But yeah, when we dove into the projects and hang on a minute, you know, there's combat vehicles, there's going to be um, animals, there's the whole historical side of things. Yeah, it's it's way more than it appears on first glance. So yeah, drone you, you, racing. Yep. If you didn't um, check that out yet, make sure you catch up on the one two show because that was um, without toot near own, our own horn too hard. That was a pretty, pretty good show. I think it was a lot of fun. And there was, they dropped a lot of information in there. There's a hell of a lot to unpack, which of course that's relevant to that project, but I think it also speaks to where the whole space is going, you know, with a bigger picture sort of mindset. So yeah, yeah. check that one out. Definitely. All right. Anybody uh, else want to chime in? Oh, you got something else, Chase? Well, I want to ask Shaq if there's any uh, any updates on her the project she's involved in because I'm I'm really can't wait for that. Like, if there's not, I can I can be patient. But any like little sneaky peekies? Yes. Away. 
<laughs> well, we have a lot of exciting um, uh, locations for our dev shops. I have tried oh, to nice. um, locate one per city and really try to be inclusive with uh, who, you know, who I, who I grant the dev shop to um, not just staying in our own group of friends that always work together, but, you know, like trying to spread it across various countries and nationalities and, you know, really get it out to different groups um, in the spirit of we're all one and collaboration and everything that I say all the time. So, um, we are not announcing all of those cities officially. I've had some people email me and say, tell me where you are putting them because I want to buy. And I'm like, well, it's not public yet. So um, anyway, I'm just excited about where, uh, you know, getting it up and running. We're hoping to launch by July 20th. And we're waiting for confirmation from Upland that they can uh, get those dev shops activated. Uh, so stay tuned and I really don't have anything to report until we get more information about it from Upland. Thank you so much. Jack. Thank you for it's asking. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. All right, what, what else have we got Chase and anybody else? Um, we're open to spruik in your own projects. Um, we all good? All right, well, let's dive into the topic of cars. Now, we kind of started to get kicked off on that before we press the record button and we said hang on wait 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 till we get going um cheese always looks at things as a glass half full and i'm always a whiner so yeah i i looked at it and i thought man these had just been hanging for days and it was kind of interesting to see that they didn't really get gobbled up until it was past that whole registration period so if you didn't register for any of the cars you had to wait like two days or something for most of them and once that got to that point i think then a lot of people you know took the fomo pill and dived in um yeah what do you think cheese you you were all about it you thought it was good two days i thought it was really freaking good for one um i didn't register so even if i even if nobody was buying and i was interested last minute I had to wait over a day anyway to purchase yep. the car. So I'm sure there were a lot of people who forgot to register, but had to wait mm. until, you know, it was their turn. That's number one. Number two, for nothing burger cars, I mean, a car is a car is a car. It's going to be useful, whatever. If you don't have a car, you should have just any car. My first car was not a great car as well, but they were nothing burgers. All right. The S ones were not E's or R's. They were just S ones. And the other ones that were R's and E's were not a series one. So it's like you, for two days and, and the circumstance that you had to wait a day and a half in order to buy, I thought it was extremely fast. And like for me, I was excited that like in one weekend it was gone. Yes. I, I did register for one <clears throat> of the four R's. Um, I looked at it, you know, over those two days, I must have looked at it a dozen times and I was like, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? And then in the end, I was just like, no, nah, I'm saving for Tokyo. I'm going to stick to that plan. So uh, Mike said he gobbled up three cars. That's nice. Jazz has asked, what's the point of cars these days when all the functionality is going into carts? Yeah, well, I think that's, I think they're kind of using that as the test bed. And then many of the things I'll learn there will trickle over to cars. But it's, it goes back to that question, utility versus value. Um, because there's no, I mean, there is utility. You can race these things, but I don't know. Well, like Shaq said, like cars, carts are not cars. Carts are going to be a spe yeah. special specified thing you're going to, we're going to need cars in the future to yep. get to certain places. There's certain areas that you cannot get to if you don't have a car. I think the carts are just for racing. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's, it's a gamble. You're gambling on soon. You know, are we yeah. going to get, 
are we going to get Tokyo before we get functionality for cars? Uh, you know, maybe Tokyo, you got to drive around. Who knows? That that'd be a that'd be a spanner in the works, wouldn't it? Yes. All right, Dak is here, is he? Did you want to chime in, Dak? We did cover a couple of your points, but you're welcome to jump in. Yeah. So you were talking about carts. Yeah, cars and carts. Yep. Utility versus value. That whole angle. Yeah. No. And and. It, sorry I was late, but I actually was on a call with Jen and uh, Jeremy. And so we were talking about different things. And yes, carts are going to be its own little subset, but it's going to be used for a lot of the functionality. And it doesn't it doesn't have passenger capacity. It doesn't have cargo capacity, right? And we know that th this is all part of the functionality they're going to be bringing into Upland in the future. So vehicles are going to be different from carts. Now, I, let, let me change that. Automotive, um, autos, cars, semis, trucks are different from carts. They're all going to fall under the vehicle category, which is going to be interesting, right? Um, so, but carts right now allow Upland to really kind of experiment. And we talked about this last week where they, they're able to experiment on the racing mechanics of that, you know, being able to uh, self-manage and so forth because they're coming in under different types of uh, functional attributes and they don't have to worry about cargo. They don't have to worry about anything else and have to worry about how it's going to fit into the transportation and, uh, and, uh, transport side of things. Right. So it does kind of parts have its own, have their own place. I think that there's going to be like an underground of people just driving like mad. They're called carts. And, you know, today, I, I don't know if you mentioned this, but Matsuda, uh, he's having his big go-kart race challenge this afternoon or this evening. Actually, I think it's happening right now. So, Just finished up, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. So there you go. And uh, and so I see that kind of becoming, obviously, uh, I haven't announced this in many places yet, so I'll break it down here. We are going to be doing a go-kart series in URL. So the, you know, the way we did the sponsorships for S1s and everything, we will be having uh, sponsorships and the race and the whole league for go-karts, right? So it's going to be exciting and interesting when, when, when we see people racing and now not, you know, like the chant, the finals, it was like, ah, the excitement of, you know, who's going to make it, who's not going to make it, but it was all RNG. It was already predetermined kind of thing, right? With this one, the excitement will be a little more powerful too because you'll have people controlling the go-kart a little bit more. So until S1s and others get that functionality, go-karts are going to be where racing is going to be a lot more interesting. Yes. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm hoping to set up the the Delbrook short track that I have in mid Ten Terrace. I'd love to set that up as a go-kart track, but I think I'm going to be hampered by the... Um, I, I'm assuming we're going to have a another speedway metaventure style building we're going to have to put up, but a lot of the properties along there are tiny ones, so I'm not sure that's going to be possible. So remember, they came out with medium yeah. for the metaventure that's coming out. So they haven't done the large and they haven't done the small. I can yeah. see the small being the go-kart tracks. Yeah, it's just the way it's orientated because the speed speedway metaventure is like um, landscape mode. But a lot of the properties, the small properties are portrait mode. So it just doesn't kind of fit in. So I have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's thing. All right, well, what, what was your take on the um, the days and days of car sales? We just kind of were wrapping up on that conversation. Did you want to chime in that with your very biased opinion? Was it a good thing? Was it a bad thing? I really wanted to hear what TB125 had to say, so I'm sorry I missed that. Well, I don't think he, you haven't chimed in with your opinion on that, have you, TB? No, actually, I saved the uh, car part of my legit specifically for now in the hope you'd be joining, Dak. So I've uh, I've actually Perfect. just been racing the go-karts, so uh, I came in fifth overall. I was uh, very proud of myself. Um, oh, very nice. Yeah, car cars has been interesting. I mean, obviously, we've seen what you know what hasn't hasn't happened with the sale this week. But a, a couple of bits that are worth noting, I think, is um, just speaking personally, I've seen no sales at all the last couple of weeks through my store. Mm -hmm. um, so there's definitely not as much general interest in them. But also, there were several cars available for purchase under mint in Upex at the time the sale came out. And it was interesting to me that people were paying 20,000 upics more 
to buy a car directly from Upland when there were ones in the stores for sale that they could have picked up for cheaper. Mm. Uh, I think that which... goes to the uh, to the idea of distribution and marketing in terms of being able to understand where to go find the deals and how many people actually visit the meta ventures because you have to have a uh, you you have to physically go versus in Upland you just click a button. Yeah, hundred percent. It's really interesting. Like one, the marketing bit, you're absolutely bang on, I think. And also the travel to get to a thing. It's like how much are people willing to spend to save the effort of doing a thing? You know, we're all pretty lazy. I'd have probably done the same thing if I was buying something this time around, but uh, I've joined Ben and save that. twenty and twenty thousand upics is not that big a difference. I mean, certainly to to some of us, it's not. But then I guess to some people, it is depending on what your gameplay style and and what you're trying to get. So, um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I must admit, I only just discovered the the Upland inbuilt search functionality and it and how it actually is pretty good this mm. this week. Um, because I've been using Ablend for ages and it was down, and so I was desperately trying to find another means. And it turns out actually the built-in functionality is pretty decent. Yep. Um, how many people knew that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I knew it because I'd recently listed all my block explorers. But yeah, if it wasn't for the fact that I got that meta venture and had to do some research, I probably wouldn't have known. Yeah, yeah. I think it was also so, interesting that people were still trying to sell their place in line, even though you know the sales <laughs> are sitting there for days. There was all these posts. Hey, you, do you want to buy this? I'll only charge you twenty thousand upex or something. It was crazy. Well, and I had nearly PDM during that. Yeah. So I think that what's interesting is that it, it just kind of goes to show that there's only certain cars that are going to move. The S1s will continue to move. The semis will continue to move. Go-karts still are doing well. Um, you know, I think part of it is because of the functionality. Part of it is because it's the new thing. Uh, and because it's also limited, right? There aren't a lot of go-karts out there yet. Um, and so, but your traditional passenger cars, your S2s, your S4s, things like that, your pass, even your passenger vans, they're until you actually have passenger functionality, just like you know, until you have rent functionality for buildings, people are not as excited anymore about them because one, they're not the coolest cars to race. They're fun to race, but they're not, I mean, when you have go-kart, you'd rather race the go-kart. Yes, it or goes back one. to that. It goes back to that debate that they had at Genesis Week: utility versus value. Well, if you have utility, that adds the value. Utility is the value. Yeah. So I'll, I, I think that as more utility comes out for the S twos and the S fours and the passenger vans, you'll see those prices start to go back up. But by the time utility comes out, will there be enough passenger vehicles that it doesn't make sense to go? high on purchasing now yeah and the the um mv motors showroom um floor or the factory floor is still loaded with cars so there's still way more supply to come onto the market so we don't know how that's going to impact on everything as well and that's before you get the stock car pro cars that's yep. before you get the uh what are the vehicle many uh meta ventures that the UGC. Are going to be the yep. ugc content and so forth so there is yeah, you might have hundreds of thousands of players out there. Everyone will be able to get a car. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And Mercedes asked in chat, was the motorcycle in the Tokyo clip just a coincidence or are there motorcycles to come? I mean, yeah, I think that's that's a definite. Hey, um, guys, mind if I put my two cents in? Yes, we do. Go away. No, of course not. Yeah. We love you. That's <laughs> 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 one of the... Puppet here. Thanks, Ben. Um, so I, I've been going out on a limb and purchasing uh, a bunch of passenger vans because they went down in price thinking I'd be super smart to park them next to train stations. Mm. Um, unfortunately, with this max supply, like Dax was just saying, um, I, if everybody has a car, who's hopping in my passenger vans? <laughs> they, they're nine seaters each. I'm going to be driving around by myself with a bunch of empty <laughs> seats. There'll always be people that need a ride, especially like you have your car one place and let's say you don't want, you don't want to bring it like you're in San Fran. You don't want to bring it all the way over to New York. You go take a flight to New York and you're like, yep. Hey, who's got a car? 
I need a car to send me to drive. Like, I think there's so many use case scenarios that we could figure out that yes. you'll mm -hmm. be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a good whole point. Time zone and convenience. Like if, if the release is at MoFo AM for me, well, I might, instead of getting up and wanting to deal with that myself, I might say, cheese, is it okay if I just catch a ride with you? You know? So yeah. mm -hmm. there's a whole mm -hmm. economy yet to play out. I would, I would imagine. It reminds me of Borderlands. Catch a ride. And Shaq makes the uh, the same point too that as new players come in, and especially if they do change the the rules around how to navigate to uh, new city releases, those new players one will need the new city release, and two won't have a car to get there. Yeah. Now the question is though, Puppet, you can only drive one van. What are you going to do with the twelve others? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's something I didn't consider, Zach. Caesar well, just Dak raised could, that Dak point. Could, that could help you with that. Yeah. yeah hey, uh, are you looking for a part time uh, Uber job? Or... <laughs> no, 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 but he's going to no, hire but you. There's going to be leasing opportunities, I think. As the container system kind of uh, improves, I think that you will be able to see leasing and renting opportunities. Yeah, that would be great. That's actually a good point because um, as part of that, chat we had uh, last week with um, the XNFT project, Acero was talking about how I asked how many semis did you have? And he's got so many, he doesn't even know. Like he said over 15 or something to set up like a transportation hub. But if you, if you can only control one at a time in the UI, that's going to be, well, that's not going to go down. Well, all these people that have spent bulk cash buying up these things to do these um, transport kind of businesses. That's going to well, be interesting. Here, here's, here's a devil's advocate for you. We have plenty of BEs. So who's to say that we can't assign a BE to a car? If we mm. could do it for races, why not do it for semi-trucks and cargo vans and passenger vans? Good point, because you can't start on how they do. Sorry, But Dan. it depends on how you do the transportation. So, for example, when you take your BE and you go from one city to another city, your BE is, you're, you're kind of locked. You, there's limited functionality that you can do while your BE is traveling, mm. right? And so yeah. if transportation works like uh, transportation does in Upland currently, your mm. BE would be locked. Like if you're on that's, the airplane. Mm. But right, that's, spec exactly. that's speculation. That's it's all speculation. All speculation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Buyer beware. Buyer yeah. Don't listen to anything that says. <laughs> Not financial advice. Not financial advice. Not game strategy. I had a question yeah. for Dak, uh, Ben. Yep. Uh, so, Dak, uh, you you mentioned earlier that you spent some time with Jeremy and uh, Jennifer, or Carlos and Jennifer, one of the two, Jennifer and Jeremy. No, Je Jeremy and Jennifer. Yeah. Okay. JJ. Um, JJ. <laughs> during that time, because uh, we're all friends here, and you can tell us everything that. <laughs> <laughs> did you sure. did you come across a discussion about the meta ventures for the speedways and and how those were being handled or any of that type of information mm -hmm. and the second yes. part to my question is um for for some of the utility that you understand for those meta ventures will that extend over into the stock car pro as we've seen a double verified stock car pro Uplander in that's got uh, three properties, about eight hundred fifty thousand upix net worth. Can you answer those two questions for us? Uh, I don't. I can't. I would only speculate on the stock car pro on the application process. I because obviously I have an application in. Mashup has an application in. Many of the people uh, sanctioned tracks in URL have applications in. Uh, so I did ask the question, and they are going through the process. They're, so there was first the initial review. Now they're going through the QA review. And so as they go through the QA reviews, I think you're going to have more and more people starting to get information. But the message was patience. Please be patient. We are going through them. Uh, they have gone through the first round. So if you didn't get an email, like a lot of people got emails saying, you know, this and that, that was that initial review. Now they're doing the QA review for um, kind of like the fit and how it's going to impact, you know, the, you know, how, how it works uh, kind of thing. So they're doing the QA reviews now. After the QA reviews, I think that's when we start to see uh, some of the uh, tracks actually starting to get built. Yeah. Cause one of the things that I'm, that I'm, I hope that they're, aware of and if you get the opportunity to 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 have this conversation again is 
there may not be a a focus on areas of players who have spent their time, their money, their effort, their energy to build up an area to have put a application in for a specific track on a area of the node they've been working on. And then somebody would come in and not have anything to do with that and swipe that opportunity away from that node. That would be an absolutely a brutal, brutal, um, uh, uh, over, MTU oversight. doesn't know anything about don't that. Know anything about that. Get, don't know what you're talking we about. Won't, yeah. We won't even get into it. Uh, yes. But that is a really good point, Uplando. And uh, Jen and Jeremy did ask that if I hear about things to so reach out to them, I will bring that up. The other thing, too, is I know, for example, when uh, some of the race commissioners were talking about submitting and everything, one of the things I mentioned is there was a, a spot for adding information in kind of like a little text box. I said that, you know, just put in that you're a URL sanctioned track uh, because our san you know, our sanctioning process is actually more rigid than Upland sanctioning process, right? Now, we're not technical in the same way that we tried to follow some of the technical elements that we knew about back a year ago. But in terms of like the, what, Uplanda, what you were talking about, about the investment in the community, investment in the node, uh, making it part of a business plan for the neighborhood or, you know, the player investing in all this. Those are things that URL tracks did take into consideration, right? And so, um, you know, I'm hoping that if there is, if, you know, I'm going to one, I'm going, so I'm going to make them two, two points, you know, to look at that and, you know, take into consideration URL sanction tracks. And two, um, how do they consider node management or neighborhood uh, driven tracks versus randos? Yeah, it's going to be a huge thing. So yeah, I appreciate you doing that and uh, pass the message along. Thank you so much for your time, Dak. Yeah, I don't even know how they do that because I mean, yeah, I mean, we we they... plant our flag in the ground and say, okay, we this is our spot, but you don't have any actual ownership or claim to it. Anybody can come along and do whatever they want if they have the properties the only... that fulfill the requirements. Right. The only way I see that actually being a thing is when like uh, a neighborhood or a node wins a one of those. Uh, um, contest the, yeah. the collection contest like Playa del Rey we know is a they've invested they've put the effort in they have the hours they have the collection right so yes. Playa del Rey has someone that is I, I don't know how they worked with Upland to kind of define who who was managing all of that because that was a whole other thing right yes so Upland it's a good point and I know that a lot of uh a lot of folks have invested heavily in building up neighborhoods and all of these things. I don't know how Upland prevents a rando. Yeah, just awareness. Cheese has awareness. invented a new phrase, rando commando. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Watch love out it. for the rando commandos. Yeah. It's, that's, that, there you go. Bring some awareness the next time you're able to speak to him. They obviously that was my nickname in high school. <laughs> they were obviously aware of it when they did this with, you know, the other tracks that were in there. They had to reach out. So they they, they should be aware of that at all. I just, I appreciate Nobody that. They didn't reach out. They didn't reach out. They, yeah, there was drama kicked off and they, they were interested in the drama. And I'm sure they would have digested that information and took lessons away from it. But yes. at the end of the day, there's only so much we can do. Like as... Jack mentioned this player Del Rey. Well, maybe they could do that, but then that project has had its own dramas to contend with. So yeah, it's up. There's no way Upland can manage all of that. So yeah, but I'll bring it up. Yep, I do have to get going, but everyone, thank you, and uh, be on the lookout for more stuff. No worries, mate. Cheers for jumping in. Well, we've got a few more things to wrap up on. I just wanted to briefly mention too that. As for the kind of lagging car sales, we are currently having a lagging spark sale. It's the same kind of thing. I took the screenshots before we kicked off, so about an hour ago. Um, look at that, the, the one sparks, only 23. Sorry, only seven of the 30 had been sold. Normally, they used to get gobbled up. Lickety split. I mean, 26 of 30 left, 62 of 75 left. It's crickets. <laughs> What's this about? Is it, the, <clears throat> is it utility again? Is it Tokyo? Is it the Tokyo factor? Is it the utility factor? What's going on? 
Well, I'm one third away of of affording one spark. I've been making decent uh, cash sales. I was able to get over a hundred dollars. So, so you're grinding to get the best deal possible, which is the one yeah. spark. So potentially next month, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Why or why not? Your next week, away? Wendy's is selling. <laughs> I missed that. What was that? said potentially next week the way these are selling yes yeah they might still be available yeah it'd be interesting to see um wait and see uh no use for spark rent prices drops nothing new coming hunters amount growing why should we buy spark then yeah they're all very good points Caesar. Um, also i mean um let me just read what he said we have tokyo coming we yeah. may have something else coming we just had two things we had uh extension in sao paulo where we're we had berlin it's like there's just so much right now i i don't think i think in the future of upland people are going to have to strategize more and more to decide on what they want what like what are they what do they want to save for more is it spark is it tokyo is it cars we just had a car sale so it's just like so many things to choose from at the moment um, things aren't going to go as fast as we think, in yep. my opinion. That, that's all good points. And I think we're kind of, especially the people that have been around for a while, we've kind of, many of us are getting past that FOMO stage and we're starting yeah. to narrow our focus. So, but I'm going to keep banging on about it. It comes back to utility versus value again. If Upland gave us some kind of kickback for building a, uh, you know, constructing a building, if there was some kind of kickback for that, some kind of UPEX reward or something, then that utility would add value to Spark and you'd see Spark getting gobbled up. I'd also like to see Spark being sold for Apex. That would definitely get me a lot more interested. But yeah, I think you're right. We also got uh, women's FIFA. We don't know what's going to happen with that yet. There's going to be some sort of sales with that, surely. So who knows? And don't forget to the XNFT guys. It seems like they're just waiting for Upland to release some of their products. And that's going to be a whole bunch of of more um, Apex and USD sapped out of the market. So I have to wait and see. Does anyone know how much Spark out of 50,000 we already have released on the platform? I don't know that number off the top of my head. Anybody know that? How much of the Spark supply has actually been? Well, that's a good question. If anybody out? could fit, find that out yeah, and report sure. back to us. Yeah, that's a good question. All right, what do we got? 15 minutes. All right, we're going to try and wrap up on a few things here. Um, we did have a quips sent through by Wolf Warner who sent that through to me this morning in DM. Thank you for that. Cause otherwise it, was, it wasn't going to be one. And remember, remember that, um, if at any stage you have an upland or UD related question, uh, inside provocation or statement you'd like to make, there is a link to a Google form in the description or like Wolf Warner, you can just DM it through, um, to cheese on myself and you'll get yourself a prize. Which okay. is still at this point in time, it's still the Halloween signs, and Halloween's not that far away, and that's the only way you can get it is to win it in one of these prizes or competitions or events. So, pull your fingers out. So, <laughs> Wolf Warner asks, "I just reached executive status, and I am thrilled. Yes, congrats, Wolf. That's a very huge milestone. That one. Uh, but then he asks, but now what?" Any suggestions, advice on how to level up to chief executive? At this point, is it all about yield, flips, or property accumulation? Cheese, you might be uniquely placed to answer this one. You've been in that executive to chief executive limbo for a while. Any advice for Wolf? Uh, well, I got I got most of my advice to advancing from you, to be quite honest. And like the whole flipping thing, I am... I am a hoarder in Upland, which is not a good thing to be, especially with small properties. If you have small properties, Ben is like, just freaking get them out of there. Yep. Um, <clears throat> go for the dividends, go for, you know, stuff that'll bring you to that next level. Because, you know, my goal is to be a chief executive by next Genesis week. And I would love to be a part of that dinner to catch all the good, uh, you know, it, entertainment <laughs> gossip and entertainment so so yeah i'm trying my best to just create value right now and and 
get to the next level. I mean, another good thing you have for, for getting there is um, the benefits of, you know, an executive, you get longer time, like, you get uh, shorter USD sale time, shorter you have to hold your UPEX before you can send it to people times, yeah. It's still long though, like when escrow, that's what I really want. Yes. So we're just looking at your stats now, Cheese. Um, 55 million net worth, so you got about you know, 45 to go. So let's have a look, when did Cheese, this is not, obviously this is not completely accurate because it's properties net worth. So you level oh, up to- Oh no, I mean, Bronxdale screwed me up. So <laughs> where did you go executive? So 15th to the 6th, 2021. So about two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago. So from there, and then yeah, you've just been a nice gradual, steady uphill grind. It is a grind. Like it that's a grind. from 10 mil to a hundred mil, that is a hell of a grind. Look at um, me. Look at me. I don't know, anybody else want to chime <laughs> in with some advice? <laughs> Are you in that predicament yourself? Grinding away. What are you going to? I'll give some different advice. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. So I listened to some old school um, interviews with the creators of the game, and something they used to push nonstop was the fact that um, location is going to matter over yield. In fact, they both said that um, <clears throat> yield will decrease over time. At least that was their hope. Was how it was worded, and. Um, so I actually, I took a big dive in my net worth by um, paying more than mint for a lot of locations in prime areas. Mm. Um, kind of sucks with the yield coming in, but I have the hope and expectation that once uh, the streets are being used by a lot of people, um, those areas will be uh, more uh, occupied than others. But yeah, that's my advice is if I can, at least spread it up a bit. Don't just spread your map unless you're using it for a treasure map across everything and have a bunch of random, uh, rando commando property. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, I think that was up, Lando. Were you going to chime in there too? Somebody else is going to chime in. No? Yeah, I think it's, well, the, the question... The question was, you know, how did it go about it? And he asked, is it all about yield flips or property accumulation? I think it's all of the above. I mean, you want to, like I spent a lot of time accumulating properties. Like I got to almost 7,000 properties and then, you know, upwards of two years later, now I'm flipping those, flipping out of those to, you know, change up, mix things up. So you kind of got to do a bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's tricky. Just um, just keep at it and get as involved in the community as you can. I mean, like get involved. There's so many different competitions with, you know, this podcast. Uh, there's so many other podcasts out there. We've got the URL. Uh, there's, you know, the Real Node LA. I think there's, there's so many potential giveaways that you could do that you could definitely boost your um, UPEX that way. Um, oh, there you go. And Shaq's just following up on some information at the Upland meetup in London. Dirk confirmed that Spark has no cap, unlimited supply. What? 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 I wanted to have supply uh, to have a limit. Yeah, interesting. Me too. Yeah. Yes. What? Do you think maybe he was drunk? <laughs> Trolly oli oli. <laughs> Jazz said she's been hovering around 11 to 12 million for a while now. I mean, it's, it seems like when you're, yeah, it seems impossible. Exactly. When, when you just get past that hump, it seems impossible. I can kind of bring up my, maybe I'll bring up my chart as well. So I kind of hovered around that stage as well. I kind of was just gradually kicking along. And then when did I go to executive it was 2020, October, 2020. I think this this big bump up there, I think that might have been uh, Brooklyn when I bought my Dumbo collection. That might have made a big oh. bump up. Um, I, I sold up some crypto to, to get those. And then, you know, I, I gradually kicked on along. And then where am I here? I'm up to 71 million. So, yeah, once I got up to that 71 million mark and then then it becomes more of a realistic goal. That, yeah. And then that kind of, I was kind of FOMO'd into a few things. And then, you know, you're talking about 89. Well, shit, I'm only 10 million away. So <laughs> that's where you kind of kick it in. I mean, 
if if that option is available to you. <laughs> what are you wait, wait, I gotta I gotta what? share what a lamp puppet just freaking put in here. <laughs> freaking rub mid journey. <laughs> oh my god. What freaking prompts wait, did still... you put in for that? What's that? What prompts did you put in to get that? I put in a meta venture, meta venture creator on a llama. No, I'm kidding. Uh, that was the <laughs> picture uh, that we took with the puppet at uh, Genesis Week. I just put because he <laughs> he made a funny face with the puppet. Yeah, he um, did. Oh, that cool. first one looks amazing. I'm sorry. I, if yeah. Listening, if you're listening uh, on the Spotify, you're going to have to fast forward to check that epic on YouTube because that's just too funny. That is a great. I love that. Thank you for that. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> I don't think we can top that. So mm-hmm. unless anybody, anybody else has something to chime in with, we might wrap it up on that. I might throw Des Jack under the bus. Des Jack, do you have any new news about the uh, about your project? <laughs> You're just like trying to extract news from me. I right? am. Like... I am. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> can I just like throw a bit of like salt in your eyes and give you uh collection speculation news instead <laughs> yes <laughs> oh yeah heck yeah because it's like this week we'll have a a, a city uh collection re- well an expansion yes. actually expansion collection reveal so i think in two days from now we'll get the sao paulo one and it's like a weird one because i don't know i think everyone knows that there was a leak Oh, was there? Well, I'm going to say it's like 95% sure that we know what the neighborhood collections will be. Ooh, spicy. Really? Can like, spicy? I won't go for 100 because, like, of course, it's Upland, course. so they can always like, tra- change it. But, yeah, like, the story goes that it will be Pineros, Santa Cecilia, and Pari for the neighborhoods it's yeah. like like it, it won't be too like high up in the rarities because like paneros is ten thousand properties so we had a lot of um discussion in in analytic assassins because a lot of the local people say that it's like a disservice to the neighborhood if it becomes a standard collection because it's like such a well-known expensive area but mm-hmm. yeah that never held upland back of making it the standard so with ten thousand properties like the only way it could go to a limited is maybe if they do a four or even a five part collection mm. all right but yeah and then for streets it's because um the streets are still um these are old minted collections on chain so the encryption is still in the way that we can see some clues like for all the newer cities that's not the case but for sao paulo because it was an old one it was already on chain so we have some clues all right is that most of the streets like we will most likely if no financial advice have those (laughs) three neighborhoods Uh and then four streets in this uh, wave with around 16 to 17 characters for most streets yeah. Except one. One will be more around, like, I would say 29 to 31 characters. Like, I'm I'm taking a bit of a margin there. All right. Just very long. And we also think that it won't be a Rua. Like, we think it will be an Avenida. All like, all right. Of, that all, all of the streets will be Avenida. That would also mean that in a later wave, Everyone thinks that Rua Augusta is going to be there. Wait, am I, wait, I have to double check if it's Rua Augusta. Mm. Yeah, well, we think Rua Augusta will be out. Um, and for the 31, it's like there's a lot of speculation there, especially because... Wait, I have to find a picture because otherwise I don't... It's difficult when it's like non-english streets because it's difficult to so there were there was one street that could be the 31 ish street yeah 
Um, Does it have a really long name? It has a really long name because it's all right. Really I think I have it. <laughs> but the problem was the yeah. most uh, speculated one had um, already properties up in wave one, and that's not possible. Yeah. Except there are only two of those properties there, and they are actually locked, and they're actually only share like added to the upland map during the wave two release, which is super weird. Ah, which is super weird. So that's yeah, I think that's my 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 news like does that satisfy like good news like can i hold yeah that satisfies on the, on the other that definitely satisfies all right we'll have to wait and see we'll keep in a yeah. close eye on that myself and if there's a few left unminted i might go do some gobbling have to wait yeah it might be smart. Like for for standards like we had a discussion as well like are standards worth it to mint especially if it's like that large scale if they're big and cheap, then yeah. Because you get that little tiny boost. Yes. Well, yeah, true. But because like standards don't perform really well, so could, especially for those cities that there's not major, major interests for, then it, it could even like, could even maybe see some undermint after. Yep. Um the reveal, so that's always a bit of a oh. yeah. Some advice. All right, Des Jack, hang around for five seconds because we're going to do a giveaway here. Um, Jazzy is back. She did send me the snapshot. I have trimmed the snapshot down to just who is in the chat. Um, I'll look through that quickly. If your name's not on the list, let us know straight away. TB, Caesar, Zoe, Rob, Finsky, Shack, Maui, Laban, Simone. Kind of Blue Rain Jazz, B Ryan, Sonas, Upland Puppet, and Des Jack. Anybody missing? Cheese and D-Tech don't get to play. They don't. <laughs> That's fine. No, I don't want to take it away from someone else. Chat clear, Cheese. We good? Nobody's screaming um, in chat. Um, let's see. I don't see chat. Do you have Puppet in there? Uh, yeah, I believe down the bottom there. Yep, Upland Puppet. Thank you. Oh, here we go. You good? Nobody's screaming. No one's screaming. All right. Part of me. Let's <laughs> see who's going to win or who's going to play to win. Oh, look at that. She's back from holidays or has it ticked over? It's a borderline. B. Ryan just missed you. B. Ryan. He's a cool dude. Yeah. Woo. All right. Let's see what B. Ryan's going to win. Ah. Uh, <laughs> The Brian that's cold. Care of Samurai Aquatics and Decor. Oh, something different. Look at that. You get one of Cheese's very fancy umbrellas. Cheese and D-Tex collaboration. The Dragon Umbrella. Yeah, I created that dragon on top. Congrats, B. Ryan. I'll send you a DM and work out how you want to pick that up. Nice. All right, that's all I've got for this week. We touched on a lot of stuff today. Anything else you got going on, Cheese, before we get out of here? I'm just uh, really working very hard on my <clears throat> Uplandia stuff. Um, I want it to look perfect. It's it's getting there. I'm working on the Adventurers Guild now. I have to make it suited to my storyline. And just to FYI, anybody who is interested in uh, being a partner with Uplandia, if you want to bring your note in, um, just let let Uplando know or let me know, and I'll let him know, and I'll I'll help walk you through the application process. Anybody could get in, but it's not. It, there's a lot of work you have to do. That's the whole thing. It's it's um, you have to create your kind of theme your storyline you have to create your quest you got to create your art and you don't have to be an artist uh you can use the ai art i personally want to use my pixel art so it's taken me a little bit longer but i have yep. to get it all done by next week um so yeah like like let me know if you're interested anybody can get in you just need to put the work in 
Yes, and I'll be taking you up on that offer because, yeah, I still need to yes. go through. It is a quite a l big list of stuff you need to do. But like any of these things, if you want to get involved, you've got to put a little bit of effort in. So can't just put your hand out. All right. On that note, if you have an Upland NFT or Metaverse product, service, or event to promote, don't forget that opportunities are always available for spotlights and direct engagement in the UDU podcast or the One Chi Show. Contact myself or more cheese to discuss and secure your spots. On that note, you know what to do, cheese. Get us the flock out of here. Stay fresh, cheap cheese bag. <laughs>